welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Quinn Duet Dow, and I'm speaking with... Ravish Bhalla. And we're currently in Mountain View, California, where we're both attending Google I.O. this week. Yay! <laughs> Ravish, uh, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? I'm based in Gurgaon, India. Uh, I started out as a developer back in probably 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually interning at Mobile ESPN because uh, while I was doing my engineering, I actually wanted to be a sports journalist. Oh. Uh, so during my internship, the person who was essentially my supervisor just told me about the fact that the work that I was doing was making one of the carriers in India like sh a lot more money than I was making. I was like, you know what, I can actually build this out myself. Like, why am I trying to be a sports journalist? <laughs> uh, I was already into smartphones and in, uh, Nokia N95, so I first started out, started out as a Symbian developer for a few months. Mm -hmm. That did not work out well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Android was just getting really started in India. Uh, we had the first device that launched over there. I think it was the HTC Dream. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I got started. Like, I didn't get the device, but I started coding for it pretty soon. Well, you said you started out um, first from sports, so you went from sports journalism to, uh, I guess, engineering development, but you were actually a Google design expert. Is that right? Yeah, uh, design expert since 2014. I had the pleasure of seeing a couple of your talks, uh, one recently in Chicago for Chicago Roboto and also at Joy-Con New York. But I wanted to talk first uh, or ask you first about the talk that you gave in New York, which was about designing for the next billion. And I was wondering if you could tell us what is the next right. billion. Um, so the next billion is actually a pretty official term at this point where mm -hmm. it talks about the people who are coming online for the first time. So uh, Cisco has data pointing to about a billion new users being added who are coming online for the first time since 2014. So between 2014 to 2019. And uh, so that's just the catchphrase that they use for it at this point, the next billion. So Google does a lot of talks about this, about building stuff for the next billion. Facebook's also trying to do it because that's essentially where all these companies see the next growth coming from. Is there a specific like location or kind of uh, demographic that the next billion is? Yeah, so the next billion demographic is uh, largely coming from the developing countries. So you're talking about places like India, Indonesia, Mexico, Brazil. I think the major difference is that these people have not really used a computer in their life before, which is why they've not really come online. Mm -hmm. uh, at least not use it regularly. So uh, a lot of the patterns that you ha you have associated with the design in particular is very different for, for these people because they're just not used to like your keyboards and your mouses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting because I know that we do talk on, in the mobile world about emerging markets um, and generally in, re in regards to say like data usage and like I guess battery and power and devices. And what I really loved about your talk was that you actually came at it from a design perspective which is something right. I had never thought of before. And I think you gave a, some great examples at your talk um, in Chicago where you talked about material. The material guidelines are kind of a big deal for us nowadays to, to give yeah. us like rules and, and I guess a measure of good design. But what I thought you, was really interesting that you kind of, you kind of explained that maybe that the good design is not exactly, good design is not good for everybody and there's yeah. a specific reason for that. Yeah, I mean, um, a bit of it came down from the fact that uh, a lot of people look at the material designs as rules, right? right? And you start having a lot of like template-like apps going out, and a lot of people criticize material for that reason. Um, the point of my talk was more about just breaking this down and being like, okay, material needs to behave like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Google themselves are making more of an effort on that side, saying that material doesn't have to look like this, but needs to behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought there was a great point you made that, um, so a lot of the uh, kind of material design design guidelines talk about uh, flat versus skeuomorphic, right. and that there's elements of flat and skeuomorphic in material. Actually, um, for just for anyone who hasn't heard of the difference, um, what's the difference between flat and skeuomorphic design? So uh, skeuomorphism actually is based on the word skeuomorph itself, which means uh, for decoration, essentially. So <laughs> uh, anything that you have around in your life, like anything that you might have, for example, on a mug, which has like some pattern on it, that's actually a skeuomorph, essentially. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, a lot of the skeuomorphic design from before used to have like things like ring binders over there, which is skeuomorphism because it's trying to mm -hmm. replicate something from the real world. Uh, flat, on the other hand, is this idea of just flat completely, right? So there's no depth to the design at that point. So it's, everything's going to be on one particular plane itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the closest thing we have to that is probably Windows 8 and Windows yeah, 10. Yeah, the metro kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, they do have two layers to a degree, but it's primarily flat. You don't have shadows on that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think I remember skeuomorphic from like the old iOS 6 days when you'd have like apps right. that have like stitching on them and yeah. things like that. Um, so trying to get that kind of tactile feel. And uh, But material is kind of like a little bit of both, not quite flat, but not really skeuomorphic exactly. either. Yeah, so they, they have uh, elements of skeuomorphism in there, primarily shadow, mm -hmm. uh, which is 
But the, the reason I say that's not schemophism is because it's not there for decoration. It's there to kind of help the user understand where they are, what's more important than the other. So it's not schemophism, but it, it's also not flat mm -hmm. because there is depth. You made a great point um, in your talk about how kind of like the flatter design actually doesn't work. Um, you said in India, it, it doesn't actually right. quite work as well for new users or people yeah. coming online for the first time. Why is that? Um, so the reason we had schemophism and the reason it was popular was because people kind of felt comfortable using things they use in the real life in the digital interfaces now, mm -hmm. right? Uh, f they still need that now that they're coming in for the first time, right? So the reason schemophism doesn't work well for us anymore is because we never use a calendar in our life anymore. There's a physical calendar. Right. Uh, these people still do. So for them, it's still like that kind of in-between stage where they're coming in and it's like, okay, they want to feel comfortable like we did back in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So it's a good transition, it's a good transition. So, to relate yeah. to something in, in yeah. real life. It's the affordance that kind of helps them understand what they're using, how they can use it and stuff like that. Have you run across any other cases kind of similar to this where something that perhaps we who may have been kind of, I guess, online or or, part, or kind of grew up in the PC age take for granted like uh, that, you know, we don't see or that maybe be might, might be like kind of a, a gap for people uh, in the next yeah. billionaire coming online for the first time? I mean, to a degree, it's uh, I think swipes is one of those things that people aren't kind of used to. So it's like horizontal swipes in particular, is something that they are not very comfortable with itself. Um, a completely blank uh, page like Google's homepage often doesn't work well for them because they have oh, they don't feel comfortable using it. Uh, some of the other things is just the ability to read. So like India has a 74% literacy rate. So that means 26% of people in India can't read at all. So mm -hmm. that's literally an accessibility issue over there itself. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, what, what can we do? Like, um, I mean, obviously I know, um, so I, I live and work in America, so I, I feel like, you know, for me, I, I'm very skewed a certain way in thinking about certain things. I'm just very excited material, but what, what, can, what can we do to, I guess, design and approach experiences better for the next billion? Like, what, what are your kind of top tips for being con cognizant and, right. and addressing these issues? I think the first is going to be doing a lot of on the ground research itself, uh, getting out there, seeing how these people use the devices, uh, Facebook has a pretty good blog post up about doing international research. Uh, my sister's actually part of the team, so I know a lot about that itself, and awesome. therefore they put in. Uh, you have to connect with the users ultimately, right? Absolutely. Uh, the other side of it is take accessibility very seriously, because I personally believe that it's a big part of it itself. Like I said, 26% people can't read, so they need to understand from an accessibility perspective. Uh, Google has a talk this time about uh, at IO for designing for the next billion, but they're taking it from a complete accessibility perspective, talking mm -hmm. about how the majority of people with accessibility issues are actually in developing countries itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the best practices will apply even for these people. And uh, probably have a lot more affordances, so like uh, maybe just icons won't work for people, maybe just text won't work for people. Can you have designs that kind of use both of them itself? to just increase your chances of communicating with your users itself. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I, I know that you've actually written a few great Medium articles as well. Like You mentioned yeah. the horizontal swipe, swipe and I, I recently very, uh, read a great article that you wrote about that. And I think you were, you're talking to like uh, uh, someone in India. Who, the Uber driver. The Uber yeah. driver, yeah, yeah, who wasn't sure what to do with the horizontal swipe. So yeah. um, definitely you should check out a lot of uh, Revish's research and uh, kind of like writing on this and, and his talks because it's, it's a fascinating subject and I think uh, you know, from a, I guess from a business development standpoint, a lot of us do care about, you know, emerging markets in the next billion, but I think thinking about it from a design perspective is well, extremely important, yeah. but something that's a little bit under, it doesn't quite have enough attention paid to it. Sure. So, but thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, if people wanted to find you on the inter internet, how can they do that? Uh, Twitter, I'm at Ravish Bhalla. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ravish. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.